Before you enjoy this video, why not consider signing up for an account at PAX? Whether you're a player, agent, club, or scout, PAX is for you. Create your free profile and connect with those in the industry today. For more information, please visit us at www.paxsports.com. That's www.paxsports.com. Now, please go ahead and enjoy our video presentation. All right, guys, welcome to Next Gen Rugger. So today we're going to be looking at a junior box squad, a hypothetical one for the 2020 World Cup. And uh, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to click that subscribe button as well as bell notification and you'll be notified when all new videos are released. So let's get into it straight away, guys. So we all know that the Under-20 World Cup has officially been cancelled. Um, it's very, very disappointing. I think there are a lot of people that are disappointed by it, but I mean, what can you do, huh? I really do believe that this year's group had everything in them to stop our bronze medal curse. And I mean, it has been a curse, guys. If you take a look at the tournament in general, I think about 80% of the tournaments we finished in third, and a lot of those tournaments we should have won. But it was not meant to be. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to look at a squad that sort of we think could have taken home the gold medal. Now, there are going to be a heck of a lot of disagreements on that. I'm prepared for it. Just leave your comments below on who you think should have been in the squad instead. And I will give my justifications with each position. And I'm going to also do a starting lineup. So, the squad composition, I'm choosing five props, uh, two hookers, three locks, six loose forwards, four halfbacks, three centers, and four members of the back three. So we start off with the props. First name on my list, always going to be Hanro Jakobs. Um, he's a porous youngster, um, the, part of the 2018 team, one of the best scrummages I've ever seen at schoolboy rugby level. And uh, no doubt, I think he would have had to be an automatically uh, automatic entry into the squad. Absolutely amazing player. Second, I would have Banele Mtajane. Um, he played at Nalspreit. A very, very underrated player. I'm very mobile as well and very powerful scrummager. Um, definitely what I would sort of have more of as, a, as an impact player, which I'll get to a bit later. Um, then Diovat Donald, I mean, he has to be in. Um, Afiz didn't have their best year either in 2018, um, but he was definitely a standout, guys. This guy's extremely powerful and, um, you know, he reminds me of a sort of very strong old school prop. So I really look forward to seeing how he develops and I'll definitely have him in the squad. Then um, the other prop would have to be Tabiso Mleche. Um, he was part of the squad last year. So they obviously um, blooded him for this year. And without doubt, he deserved his place in this team, uh, in my opinion. I mean, he's a hell of a scrummager. Uh, showed at schoolboy level what he can do as well. Was one of the best props in the country, in my opinion, at schoolboy level, along with Henry Jacobs, obviously, as well. Uh, then my last prop would have to be Jan Hendrik Vessels. You, uh, you just have to put him in. I know, I know a lot of guys are saying, should he move to loose forward? Could he be a lock? Um, at this stage, he's still a prop. So I would play him there, and um, I, I think, you know, it's not a question about blooding guys in this year because the whole thing is there's a squad to win it. So I definitely think uh, Jan Hendrik Vessels would have had a hell of a tournament this year and uh, probably would have been a starter. Um, you know, that's what I think the selectors would have done anyway. Then we move on to the hookers. Uh, my first hook would be JJ Kotzer. So he's currently at Marty's right now. He's playing for the Young Guns team. And uh, he was, I mean, uh, you know, the Poor Rose Front Row of 2018 had Andre Jacobs and JJ Kotz in it. And I mean, you know, those are, those are two thirds of the, the best front row, one of the best front rows, if not the best front row I've ever seen in school rugby. Um, brilliant player, big future ahead of him. And uh, he would definitely be playing, um, you know, union rugby if he chose not to study. Uh, then my other hooker obviously has to be Jacques Wilson. Um it's not only about blooding players in, like I said, I mean, Jacques's got a massive future in the game, hugely talented player, and, um, you know, having him there for this year as an understudy to JJ, as he was an understudy for SA schools, I think that just, uh, you know, carries on with the continuity, so to speak. Then locks, my first lock, Adrian Alberts. Now, 
I think everyone expected him to be the next big thing, and a lot of people feel that he has fallen off the radar a little bit. But you you, you can't lose that amount of talent in a two year period, guys. Just impossible. And he was, I think, he was in the reckoning for the squad anyway. So definitely would be a name on my list. Um, my next lock would be Emil van Heerden, another player that just is an automatic uh, starter, automatic selection, so to speak. Uh, formed part of the team last year, was a very formidable front row combination with JJ van der Mesh, had a hell of a tournament, and uh, definitely one of the best under 19 locks in the world right, I'm uh, sorry, under 20 locks in the world right now. And then my last lock would be Lug uh, Lunga Ngube. Um so he's a Glenwood old boy, um, played in the 2018 unbeaten team. Um, what I like about Ngube as well is that uh, he's quite mobile, so what can happen is that um, he can double up in the loose as well, which I like about him. Then my Lucy's. So first up, obviously, Evan Ruiz. I mean, he was number two in the PAX 100, uh, 420s this year, just behind jo uh, Jordan Joseph. And uh, yeah, very special player, probably the best loose forward of the last decade, um, in my opinion. Uh, was part of a very good Paul Boys team. Um, you know, look, they could have been better on paper. Uh, they were great on paper, but I think they could have performed better overall. But still, I mean, this guy was just head and shoulders above his peers, in my opinion. Fantastic player. My next Lucy would be Simon Miller. Now, this might seem like a bit of a controversial one because he's under 19 and not the not the biggest name in school rugby, but, uh, you know, so to speak. I mean, uh, everyone knew about him, but he, he look, he didn't go to a major school or anything like that, right? So not a lot of people are aware of him, but to me, his versatility is an invaluable asset. I mean, you can chuck him at the lock. He'll uh, perform very well. He can perform at the loose. He's under 19, so I think a bit of experience in this year's tournament prepares him nicely for next year. And next year, without a doubt, um, in my opinion, is in the squad. Uh, then we'd have Silim Pilo Gumede, DHS boy. Um, very, very underrated player. Um, had a hell of a season in 2018. And uh, yeah, I think he complements Evan Riz quite nicely in terms of the power. He brings the speed and sort of versatility as well. Um, then my next Lucy would be Sibo Sangweni, um, another great player, uh, Kersney boy, um, was part of the reckoning last year, he was part of the squad, so, you know, he's got that experience that he can bring forward to this year's tournament, I think. Uh, then I'd have Werner Gross, uh, now, I think Gross was maybe a little bit overshadowed by David Marie in the great college team of uh, 2018. Um, but he's come on in leaps and bounds since he's left school, and um, he's just looking like the real deal, guys, and I think he's going to go very, very far in his rugby career, and uh, absolutely no doubt in my mind, uh, he would be uh, perform part of this sort of squad. Then my next player would be Jared Taylor. Um, I don't think you can have a team, uh, a Jacques Wilson in a team without a Jared Taylor. I mean, it's like peas and carrots, these two. And uh, he's definitely going to be in the squad next year, right? It's 100%. So why not bring him this year? Because he's at the level of these guys. I mean, he played SA schools uh, for two years. And uh, like Horsen and uh, Miller, I think uh, that experience can come forward. Um, to me, he's the real deal. And I think he'll go very far in his game. Very special player. So I'll definitely have him in my squad. Then in terms of my halfbacks, I mean, obviously, you know Jaden Hendricks is going to be in there. One of the best, actually the best uh, under-20 scrum half in the world. I don't think it's actually close, to be honest with you. Um, then his sort of understudy would be uh, Thomas Percy. Uh, he's a Salbornian, uh, very classy player, very versatile as well. Um, I'm thinking in the bigger picture in terms of the squad, right? So Bursi can like slot in probably a fly off as well. I think he scored the winning try against Great College in 2017 for Selborne. That was their first win since like 1994 or something against the boys from Bloom. And, um, you know, he, he really had a great 2018 season as a scrummy, but he's very versatile, so you can put him anywhere on the pitch. Um, and I think he'd be an ideal understudy to Hendricks in this tournament. Uh, then my fly off without doubt John Mostard, similar situation to JJ Kotze, uh, currently playing the Young Guns competition. Um, but anyone that watched uh, the 2018 season that saw this guy, I mean, he just can make magic happen at the war, guys. Outstanding player, is definitely going to go far. Choosing studies over rugby right now, you know, really responsible youngster. Um, you know, but I'm itching to see him get into, uh, get into a union and sign up and start playing because I think this guy's. Uh, career is going to be accelerated very quickly and any union that snaps him up is going to be very, very lucky. Uh, then my other fly-off would have to be Kay Volhitter. 
Um, there's a lot of you guys out there that think Cade's overrated. I, I don't think he's overrated at all. I think he's he is the real deal, in my opinion. Yes, maybe he can work on his defense a little bit, but in terms of his reading of the game, his tactical kicking, his kicking for poles, everything is just 10 out of 10. It's 10 out of 10 in terms of where he is in his age group. And um, he would have to be an automatic select uh, selection for next year's tournament. So, you know, um, when he played, him and Mostert played in the same Paul Ruiz team, right? So uh, Cade played fullback back then and basically was an understudy to Mostert. I mean, who better to learn from than John Mostert in terms of your school rugby career? And I think Cade took a lot of the things that he learned from Mostert and he took it into his game um, last year. And, uh, you know, it was an absolute travesty that he wasn't selected for SA schools. And um, in my hypothetical scenario, anyone from any club in the world can be selected. So that's why I'd select Kate Volheter. And I'll definitely be giving him a run against some of the weak opposition. Also give him 15, 20 minutes on the pitch. Uh, just to rest most a little bit in some of the games where they've already been closed out. And really prepare him for next year's tournament. And I think next year is going to be a breakout year for Kate. I've got no doubt about it. Centres, uh, start off with Reinhard Jonker from Glenwood, very, very special player, guys, he's got all the weapons, he's got pace, he's got an ability to spot the gap, very solid on defence, um, very, very skillful player, can't rate this guy highly enough, I mean, to me, it's a no-brainer, he has to be in the team. Uh, then the other centre I'd have is David Killerman, now I've spoken about David Killerman a lot back in the 2018 season. Uh, this is like another travesty that this guy wasn't selected for SA schools. I mean, so many travesties in terms of SA school selections, and this was a huge one. To me, he was one of the standout centers in the 2018 season. And um, I, I would like to see him be given a chance, because I think if he gets given a chance, he's going to take it with both hands, and he's going to show all his detractors that they were completely wrong about him. Final center would be uh, Zwellen Darben Mnombombo. Uh, yeah. So I screwed that one up a little bit, but uh, that's why I just put Will and Darby there. But I did give an effort, so give me a couple of points there. But yeah, this guy's a fantastic player, guys. Part of a great Salborn team in 2018. Uh, was one of the leaders in that team. Um, I just I remember watching him during the Dale College game where he absolutely just carved. Very special player, and I think uh, definitely, uh, definitely has the potential to become a Springbok in the future. Um, like I said, he's got you know he's, he's got the he's got the ball carrying ability. He can offload well, spot the gap, very solid on defence as well, and he's you know he's built very solidly as well. So he would definitely be in the reckoning, um, in my opinion, if the selectors had to choose. But in terms of my team, hundred percent he's in. Then finally we move on to the back three. So first I would have Richard Creel. I've spoken about him a lot. Very versatile player. Very skilled player. Um, this guy can go all the way. I mean, he was uh, playing. He played in the under twenty one final last year as a nineteen year old, and um, you know I think he's ready to make the step up um, in terms of maybe Vodacom Curry Cup type rugby, um, and it won't be long before we see him play um, franchise rugby for the Bulls. He's very, he really, really is a special player. Then next, I'd have Stravino Jacobs. Um, so uh, he was he only graduated. Uh, last year, um, but he, uh, he he was part of the SA Schools mix in 2018. Um, very powerful runner, a lot of pace, and uh, definitely one of the best wings in the country, schoolboy level, not only for one year, for, but for two years. Then I'd have Darren Hendricks, um, Portland Lampo, old boy, and uh, if you guys watch the World Schools Festival, you would see what a special player this guy was. He was just the real deal, guys. Um, Lampo blew very hot and cold that year, but I think their one consistent was Darren Hendricks. I mean, uh, you know, the guy's got pace. He's got the ability to open up gaps. He's got a great boot on him. I, th I, j I just think he's got all the right ingredients for me um, to be part of the SA Under-20 squad. I really do rate him as a player, and I hope that, uh, you know, he fulfills his potential. Then finally, we have Zilinga Stradom. Um, he's a Gas Fontaine old boy from last year. And I didn't know much about him at the start of last year, but as the season progressed, I could see, wow, this is like a very, very special player we got over here. He's a big boy, um, a lot bigger than most fullbacks, and um, I think he played center as well, but at Craven Week. But uh, he's versatile, you know, I think you could put him on the wing, you'd do well, but first and foremost, he's definitely is a fullback. But I think you could put him around the back line, give him a bit of experience, because next year he's definitely going to take some names. 
So finally, we move on to the backline starters. So this would be my starting team. And like I said to you guys, I'd give my rationale. So at fullback, I would have to go with Rich Creel, guys. Uh, the guy's just got all the skills that you need in this position. Um, he will bring a calm and a resolve at the back um, that not many people in his age do. I mean, very mature, very mature player for his age. Calm under pressure. Definitely my first name on the list. Then next, the wings, I would have uh, Stravino Jacobs and Darren Hendricks. Stravino Jacobs, purely because of his electrifying game. I mean, this guy could just make things happen out of nowhere. And in terms of Darren Hendricks, I think what you got over here is you got a guy that can add a little bit more. So Stravino Jacobs is purely a try-scoring machine. Um, not to say that Hendricks isn't, but I think what Darren Hendricks gives you as well is that he gives you that extra boot at the back. So let's say Creel's committed, uh, committed or he's stuck um, in a ruck or something like that. This quick turnover ball, you've got Darren Hendricks that can get back and actually can operate as a second fullback, so to speak. Um, you know, he's got the boot on him. He can kick for poles. His kicking accuracy is pretty decent. So I think he just adds that extra element. Plus, he's got pace. And, uh, yeah, you know, his chip kicking's great. Everything's great. I just, I think that back three over there could do some real damage on the counter attack. And like I say, even when the other team, when your opposition's counter attacking, I think that uh, they can leave some of the pressure on the team. So my centers would have to be Zwill and Darber and Jonker. I think Zwill and Darber can carry the ball up very nicely. He's got a lot of power. Jonker can open up space and, uh, you know, set the wings in motion. So I think those two would feed off each other very nicely. Then my halfbacks, I'd have Hendricks and Mostard. I think Hendricks uh, is the best in the world, like I said, and Mostard has the potential to be one of the best in the world. Um, you know, there's, he's got a lot of competition to fly off in terms of uh, under-20 level, but he's, he is a special player. And I think these two, they played SA schools together, so... I think they'd feed off each other very nicely and uh, they would get this electrifying backline blazing. I'm telling you, completely blazing. Then moving on to my forward starters. So my loose forwards, number eight, I'd have Werner Gross. Like I said, he's come on in leaps and bounds. I think he's uh, proved to become, um, you know, one of the top young players in his age group. Hell of a future in the game. Um, I'd pair him with Evan Roos. Uh, Evan Roos would bring that dimension of power. Uh, bringing the ball up nicely and then I'll have Gourmet there and I think what he would end up doing is um, um, you know basically bringing that sort of mobility and that extra pace and uh, that quickness to the breakdown and um, you know I, I think this is just a mix between power speed and uh, you know a lot of rugby RQ between the three of these guys. Uh, then my locks I would have uh, Van Heerden and Alberts and the reason for that, obviously Van Heerden, first name on the list over there. But I think Adrian Alberts would give me an extra edge in the lineouts. And I also think that the fact that these two played together at school means they understand each other's games very well and would complement each other very well as well. So that's why I'd have them as my lock pairing. Then my front row, I would have uh, as my props, Jakobs and Jan Hendrik Vessels. I think uh, so, so much power over there, unreal power, and uh, JJ Kotz at hooker. I think that front row would decimate any other under-20 front row. I don't think it would have come close. And I'm so upset that I don't. there's no chance for them to prove it. But uh, that would be my front row. And I mean, if you take a look at that pack in general, guys, I mean, that's a powerful pack. You know, you've got mobility, you've got strength, you've got everything that you need over there. And... Um, I just, I really do believe that between this forward pack and that back line, I just don't think there is an under-20 team that would have stood a chance against this team this year. It's such a pity that the tournament got cancelled because I really do believe this would not have been a bronze medal team. This would 100% would have been a gold medal team. I really do believe that. So, who would be in your squad? I'm expecting a hell of a lot of arguments from you guys over here. I know there's a lot of players I left out. It's hard, guys. It's very hard because the minute you say uh, player X should be in there, then it's like, okay, well, who do you replace him with? And, um, you know, it's uh, you've got players like Ross Broad, uh, for, uh, you know, the scrum off. <laughs> Great player, but can he offer the versatility that, uh, 
you know, Tom Bursey can, or maybe your tactics would be different to mine. Maybe you'd go for a more direct approach. Maybe you'd go for a backline completely built on speed. I don't know what you guys would sort of, uh, I don't know what your mindset is, but my mindset was that I wanted only a few youngsters in there to take through to the next year um, in key positions. And I wanted a team that was high on rugby RQ um, and that was well balanced. And in my opinion, I think the squad was uh, was well balanced. I think my opinion, like I said, purely my opinion, um, I think it would have been the ideal squad. And I think this squad would have taken home a gold medal. But what do you think? Leave your comments down below. And don't forget to smash that like button. Or if you completely hate this video and you disagree with me, smash the dislike button. I'm not afraid. <laughs> have a great week further, guys. Cheers. Bye.